will see that we have a UCS system, a one, one chassis, two fabric interconnects. So uh, an FIA and an FIB connected via two fabric extenders. And then up here we will have Nexus 5K switches for the Ethernet part. And we will have MDS switches for the storage part, so for the fire channel part. So we will connect, we will start configuring local port channels going to my fabric interconnect here. And I will have some fiber channel connectivity, also maybe in port channeling, going in fiber channel. So when the FIs are rebooting, so when they are resetting and, and resetting their settings, we will start configuring the Nexus 5000s and the MDS switches. So you see uh, what I'm doing to make those uplinks available. Of course, in the simulator, you will not be able to do these physical uplink changes. So um, I will show you that a little in a minute. Um, I will start configuring my Nexus 5K and I will start configuring my MDS just to show you how I prepare my uplink switches for uh, a UCS system. So let's first connect uh, to one of those systems. So let me set up a VPN. All right. So we connect to Fabric Interconnect A. I log in. It's, it, there's already a current configuration enabled here, and uh, which I need to erase. So the first part that I can that, that I can do here is I can check check how is my UCS cluster doing. So currently I have an A and a B cluster in primary and subordinate version. So I'm running in a correct UCS cluster. Um, I want to do the same thing for FIB. So two consoles, two different fabric interconnects, one A and one B. As you can see, first of all, let me erase this. So when we start to hop between different places in the system, we use the connect command. So like I said, currently we're in the UCS manager configuration or in the uh, software version of that. We can hop between different sides of the configuration. So the UCS manager is this CLI. If I want to change or if I want to do monitoring of the UCS manager software, so do maintenance on this, that's going to be the local management connection. If I want to check modules in the system, so in this case, either the CIMC of a blade, a mezzanine card, an IO module, if I want to go into those uh, CLIs of those separate components, I can use these connections. The last part and the most used one is going to be the NXOS part. So I can hop towards the networking part of my fabric interconnect and do all kinds of show commands there. And as I said, the only CLI that is read right, that is this CLI. And what I do here is I use set commands, or actually I'm going to use, uh, let me do a show configuration first. What you see here is uh, XML files. These are just, I do not see the XML tags, but I do see a lot of XML oriented tree architectures. So I see a lot of configuration here. This is impossible to maintain. This is so much stuff that you need to know about. This is only useful for copying and pasting. So I can navigate through this by configuring scope for VNIC, VNIC templates or a dynamic Mac stuff. It doesn't exist. So there's a lot of things you can navigate through physical components, logical components, policies, profiles, pools, everything. What's really used is connections towards NXOS. As you see, I typed in A, which means that I want to connect to the CLI of the Fabric Interconnect A. What I do is I just issue an SSH or a Telnet or something underwater to establish that connection towards my Nexus switch. And now I can just do a show version, for example. And here it will say that it is running in a 6100 series fabric interconnect. It's just running as a normal Nexus switch. Show interfaces, 
fine. The only problem we have is, is as I said, show interface management zero. It, that, will, that does not, is not maintained by the NXOS CLI. So it shows up as admin down. And it will show, it will show the IP address of this guy, but it will still show up as admin down. It will always show up as down. I cannot know shut it if I do a show run, interface management zero, you will see shutdown force. A lot of people get crazy about this. It will always show up as shutdown. I, tell, I can tell that to this guy with no problem, uh, but in the NXOS part, it will show up as shutdown. So I wanna go out and I wanna start erasing my configuration here. Because I'm erasing the UCS manager, it means that I, can, can, I need to connect to the local management CLI. If I connect to the local management, I'm now in the local management of Fabric Interconnect A. So what do I do to erase the configuration? I just say erase. So no write erase or anything. I just say erase configurations here. What this will do is it will automatically start rebooting the device right now. Am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. And I'm gonna do the same. So we have a question in the lab, does any task requirement which forces us to reboot the chassis to enable some feature like changing port from Ethernet to storage? You mean if that is in the test? Oh, definitely yes. This could definitely be in the test. So let me first erase this and I will show you something. I am running in an older version of the uh, Fabric Interconnect, so I will not be able to configure unified ports. But in the lab, as said before, we have our 6248 Fabric Interconnect ports, where we have those ports 1 to 32 to connect any kind of port. So this can be either an Ethernet port or a fiber channel port when I convert everything. And I have room for an uplink module to place ports 1 to 16 in. This is called uh, an, yeah, an uplink module or a port expansion slot. Now, what happens when I change port 32 from Ethernet to fiber channel, that ASIC needs to be reprogrammed to now support the fiber channel encapsulations, the physical fiber channel encapsulation. So I first need to replace the SFP. I need to take my Ethernet SFP or, or twin X cable out and I insert a fiber channel SFP. And then second, it needs to reinitialize the physical encapsulation. If I do that on one of the 32 onboard ports, so onboard, That requires a reboot of the whole system. If you do this on the Nexus, it's very easy. I can change this configuration. I can save my config and reboot the, the switch. On the Fabric Interconnect, if I do the unified port configuration, it immediately reboots. So as soon as I change the configuration and I apply it, it reboots the Fabric Interconnect. So never change both of your Fabric Interconnects at the same time because you will lose everything. If you do this one by one, you will not lose connectivity. So that's the first thing. If you have an uplink module, so there is a module called the gem, and that gem means that these 16 ports are gonna be unified ports. So the, it's gonna be global ethernet module or anything. Those ports one to 16 are unified ports. So I can choose them as well from being ethernet or being fiber channel. So, but on this uplink module, I have a different forwarding ASIC. So a fully, the, the ASIC which is behind these two 42 port, 32 ports is a totally different ASIC than is in here. If I change ports on an uplink module from ethernet to fiber channel, I do not need to reboot, but I need to reset the module. So all the ports on the module go down and go come back up again. So it needs to be, let's say, reseated into the switch. So I need to pull it out and pull it back in again. But that can also be done with the software thing, which is technically a power off and a power on of the module. So after that, the reset to the power of power on, 
that doesn't reboot my switch, but it only reboots the module. So especially in the, in, in the UCS form, in the UCS, I just configure the, these unified ports. And then after that, it will automatically power off, power on the ports and it will be back up again. But I do not need to reboot the whole system. So I hope you're lucky that, that Cisco in, in invested in using uplink modules here, that you do not need to change the onboard port. All right, I'll use, I will show you in a minute when we start looking at the UCS manager, when, uh, how to configure that. Because in my physical chassis, I cannot configure the unified ports, but I can in the simulator. So I will start up the simulator in a second so you can see how I start up, uh, how I do the conversion from Ethernet to Fiber Channel. All right, so how are my Fabric interconnects doing? They are back again, cool. So my Fabric interconnects are back. So I will configure my uplinks later. My Fabric interconnects are reset and I now need to start doing my initial configurations. I know for sure that I'm logged into Fabric Interconnect A right now because that's where the console port, I clicked on the switch to open up the poly window when I saw Fabric Interconnect A. You might see this blank configuration or there is pre-configuration. Probably you will see that the IP addresses and stuff are configured. But I'll, I wanna show you in this class how you start doing the initial configuration of your UCS. So in this case, I want to do a console method of doing my initial configuration. When you get this, you get scared for, let's say, I need to do everything via console or GUI or what's this? The console or GUI option here means if I enable GUI, it will start doing DHCP client towards the management port or I can do one IP address configuration and I need to do the rest via GUI. I like to do the initial configuration via the console because it's just a few settings. And after that, my GUI is, is done and I can start configuring what I want. So I set console. What do, I, what do I want to do? Do I want to restore a backup, which after that points me to uh, where's the FTP server or the TFTP server that I can find the backup file on? In this case, I'm going to set up a new system. Is this a new Fabric Interconnect? Yes, it is. Do I want to enforce a strong password? Well, I don't care about that here. I configure my password, just like I would if I would initially configure an access switch. And now I'm going to say, hey, is this a cluster configuration or a standalone fabric interconnect? In this case, it's a cluster. I have two of them. So now I can configure them. Yes, this is a clustered fabric interconnect. What fabric interconnect is this? Is this going to be your A or your number B? In this case, it's going to be A. How do I want to call the system? I call it UCS1 and that will automatically put the FI number behind the host name. So I configure only a single host name for the system and behind it I configure either A or B but that's done automatically for me. So depending on the fabric interconnect that I log into, I see UCS1-A or dash B. So now it will ask me, what is the physical management IP address? In this case, that's going to be not the virtual address. It's going to be the physical address that I can always reach this fabric interconnect on. So that's going to be 1010.210.82. What's the subnet mask? That's going to be a slash 24. By the way, that's not supported. I cannot do slash notations here. It has to be a dot and decimal notation. What's my default gateway? Same stuff. And now an important part, what is my cluster IP address? What is the IP address that's gonna move when I fill over from A to B? In this case, that's gonna be 10.10.210.81. I don't really care about the DNS server, just like a domain name. And now I'm done. Is this okay? Yes, it's okay. It will now apply the configuration to my Fabric Interconnect and that will take some a little time. So it takes about a minute. Do not start configuring FIB right now. Wait for this configuration to apply. And there's a very specific reason for that. So wait until you see this admin login. So now I can log in. And now my FI is configured. And as you can see, the host name added automatically a dash A to it. Now, why do I not want to configure FIB already when I'm waiting for this. 
That is because the following reason. I do the same stuff here. I'm going to set it up as a console. And now, because the configuration is applied on the other fabric interconnect, the other one, because those L1 and L2 links are connected to each other, you see that it detected the presence of another fabric interconnect, which is already configured. There is already a configuration running there. So I maybe I want to be adding that to the cluster, which is, of course, that's the case. What is the password? Security, of course. What is the password of my other configuration? This one. What it's going to do now, it's going to connect to the other fabric interconnect and it's going to read the configuration that it has put on there and it's going to apply that here. So it says, all right, I detected one with a, this physical IP address. It's this cluster IP address. So actually, all I need to know is what is my physical IP address. So that's going to be 10.10.210.83. And for the rest, everything that I learned, I learned the default gateway, I learned the subnet mask, I already know what the virtual IP address is. Because the other one is A, I'm going to be B, so there's no point in configuring that here. And as you can see, the hostname automatically appended dash B to it. So now configurations have been synchronized. And if everything is going okay, yeah, you might see some of these messages, but. And now configuration will start syncing and now eventually they will become in, a, in an HA state. So as you can see, some switchovers in progress. It's doing things now. It's synchronizing. Let, it, let this be for, for a couple minutes. And during this synchronization, you will see that the virtual IP address is not, not reachable yet. So it's just going to be the physical addresses that I can reach my switches on there, or the FIs on right now. So give it a, give it a few minutes to, to do it, to do it. Ah, right. Now it's primary and subordinate. It's not ready for HA failover yet, but that's because there's nothing connected yet. Or at least there is some stuff connected, of course, because I cannot change my physical topology, but it's not enabled right yet. So currently we're good to go on our UCS system in terms of the console, in terms of the initial setup. So this is my initial setup of the system. All right. So what I want to focus on right now is configuring my uplinks. So um, I want to configure port channels. So in this case, what I'm going to do is we have our FIs um, and we have three devices connected to it. We have a Nexus 5K, we have a Nexus 7K and we have an MDS. Why do I want to have two uplink ethernet switches? Well, that's because I can do disjoint layer two then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a port channel towards my N5K. And this is going to be, let's say my production switch. And my N7K is going to be connected to, let's say my DMZ environment. And in that DMZ environment, I want to allow different VLANs to go out. So I want to have a distinction from VLAN, VLANs XYZ and VLANs 123. And of course, I'm going to have some fiber channel uplinks coming from my MDS down to the FI. And that's, I can, I will configure two separate uplinks on one of the FIs and two and a port channel on the other. So here as well, and 5K. And 7K. All right, so that's going to be my setup. So two individual links here and a port channels uh, towards the N5Ks. So this is going to be my setup. So FIA and FIB. So currently I'm setting up the 5K connecting to FIA. That is my switch. Actually, that's no, let me go back. Uh, Let's switch to. 
So let me first configure switch 2. And switch 2 is the N5K connecting to FI. Let me do that in capital, so that's better. Um, let me look that up on the drawing, which ports are exactly connected there. All right. So we have our UCS system down here. Let me get this in the picture. So we have our UCS blade system down here. And we have that connected to our fabric interconnect. And those fabric interconnects connect to ports 9 and 10 on my Nexus 5Ks. Let me get my other drawing ready as well. This is a better picture. So besides having, I do not see the chassis here, but assume that it's still there. I'm going to have ports 9 and ports 10 for my FI connected to my 5Ks. So switch 2 and switch 3. And my port 11 here is going to go up to my switch 1-1. One, one. And here it's switch 1-2. Actually, I'm going to use port 11. And that or port 11 on both of my fabric interconnects is going to be my DMZ uplink. So 9, 10, 11, and 12. So 9 and 10, I need to configure these as a port channel. I'll switch to. Let's check if there's, oh, it's not Ethan. It's not Ethan. Is it? Right, no configuration on there right now. Of course, I need to enable LACP because my fabric interconnect is gonna use LACP whether I want it or not. It's gonna use LACP for the connection between the FI to the switch. And I'm going to say this is going to be channel group one, two, three, mode active. I'm going to go into channel group one, two, three. I'm going to say switch port mode is trunk. I allow VLANs 100 to 199. I'm going to say this is going to be my spanning tree port type edge. And because I configure multiple VLANs going down to my fabric interconnect, I need to configure this as a trunk an edge trunk port it's going to warn me that if i connect a switch behind this that is going to be very dangerous for me i accept that and this is my eventual configuration so i allow vlan 100 to 199 going down and i configure this as an edge port so that's really the most important configuration here let me create some vlans i don't really care about the vlans right now because i'm not going to allow some traffic in there so 1.9 and 1.10, let me show the configuration for that. That's running. Let's no shut it, just to be sure. No shut it, everything. So everything is waiting for a, for a connection to happen. Now, because my uh, connections are not configured yet, it means that my port channel is still down. So my Ethernet 9 and Ethernet 10 are still down because I did not configure my UCS yet. All right, save that. And we're going to go to switch number three. Same here, Ethernet 1.9 and 1.10. I'm going to use those for my port channel configuration. Of course, enable LACP first. Channel group 123, mode active. Interface port channel 123, switch port mode trunk. I'm going to allow the same VLANs here because I, I want to allow redundancy. And no shutter as well. It's going to be down because I did not configure Fabric Interconnect B yet. Save config. Now on my Nexus 7K, assume that I have a trunk configuration already there for allowing VLANs. 200 to 299. But going back to our drawing, what I want to accomplish is that towards the N5K, I have VLANs 100 to 199. And on the DMZ environment, I have VLANs 200 to 299. And I don't really care if I, I will not create all those VLANs because that's going to be a lot of configuration, but I will just configure a few of those VLANs. But in those ranges, those are what I configured. So this is my port. 9, 10, this is my port 11. 
Same here, port 910 and port 11. From the MDS, I'm gonna use different VSAN numbers just to be sure that I do not overlap anything. So I'm gonna configure VSAN. Uh, let's use some more creative numbering. Uh, VSAN 123 on MDS on FIA and VSAN 321 on the other MDS allowing that traffic. Actually, I wanna do more. I wanna allow two VSANs. So both 123 and 124. 321 and 322. Two vSANs, I'm going to allow those running down towards my uh, advice. So what remains is my configuration of the MDSs. And remember, on the switching part, on the Nexus part, it's not very interesting to configure a UCS configuration, but pay attention to this edge trunk configuration. The lab may or may not tell you to configure this. I would always put it on there because the UCS really, it doesn't require it. It doesn't have to have it, but it's always the good practice to do that. I would just put it on there, but that's, that's a feeling that you need to, that you need to get about doing stuff in the lab. So I have, I think MDS one and MDS two. Yes. So my MDSs are connected towards the UCS on ports nine and 10 as well. So both MDS switches are connected via ports nine and 10 going down towards my fabric interconnect. There's already some configuration here that I'm going to remove first. Just gonna clear the configuration on both ports. All right, there we are. So assume that we have no configuration on ports nine and 10. So we go into ports nine and 10, FC1, FC, FC1 slash nine, FC1, FC1 slash 10. In the first MDS going to FIA, I wanna do a port channel configuration. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create the vSense and then I'm gonna allow them going down. So I'm gonna go into the vSAN database. I'm gonna configure vSAN123 and vSAN124. That's the first step. Second step that I need to enable is because I am using this connection to go down towards a fabric interconnect, which is running in NPV mode, remember? What is it that I need to enable on my MDS? That's gonna be NPIV. So first of all, I enable feature NPIV. That's it. That's how I enable NPIV, nothing else. As, and again, it's not enabling a protocol or anything. It's just allowing those multiple logins to come in on the same port. There's another feature that I need to enable. Because I'm running a port channel for an F port, remember this is an F port on the MDS because it's running in MPV mode here. Because I'm running this as a port channel and I wanna do that for an F port, I need to enable a specific feature on the MDS because usually 
the MDSs are connected together via port channel. So it's going to be E port port channels. Now it's an F port port channel. And for some reason, it requires another feature to be enabled. And that feature is feature F port channel trunk. I need to have this enabled, otherwise I cannot do the switchboard mode F configuration on a port channel. So that's a very special command. It also allows oversubscription on port channels now, but that's a, a thing for the MDS course. So I'm going to go into FC1 slash 9 and FC1 slash 10, and we're going to say, this is now channel group 1, 2, 3. Uh, sorry, channel group 1, 2, 3. And it says port not compatible. Why is it not compatible? How am I FC1 slash 9 and FC10 running? Currently 1 slash 9 and FC1 slash 10 are running in an operational fabric mode. So that means that they're already running on the fabric interconnect. That's true. So first of all, I'm going to shut them down. If, if the <clears throat> MDS does not allow you to uh, add a port to a port channel, shut down the port first. See if it works. Not compatible based on port mode. Why is this FX port mode not supported? <clears throat> FX means as a port mode, I can be either an F port or I can connect disk loops, which is a fabric loop port. I'm not going to go in depth on the fabric loop right now, but fabric looped ports are to connect disk arrays that are looped together in the fiber channel array. So in this case, I need to first change the switch port mode to F to, to be sure that I connect an F port and now I can enable the port channeling. It still warns you, and it said, but now it says I added them to port channel 1 to 23, but I disabled them, but that's okay. Port channel 1, 2, 3, running in F mode, and now I can enable that. I need to do two more things. I first need to make sure that I enable vSAN trunking, which is on by default. So port mode is F, the trunk mode is on. But what else do I need to configure? As I said, LACP is going to be enabled on my Ethernet core channels as well at all times, but the port channel protocol on the fiber channel ports is also going to be enabled at all times. So I'm going to go into the port channel 123 and I'm going to say channel mode active. Otherwise my port channel will never come online. The final thing that I need to do is I need to say which vSANs do I allow on this port channel. So in this case, it's 123 and 124. Looking at my port channel configuration, that looks pretty good. I enabled the PCP protocol. I configured it as being an F port. Therefore, I already configured NPIV to support my, my uh, floggies from the servers. And I allow the correct vSANs going down. All right, looks good. So let's no shut it. No shut it. I'm going to do the same thing on MDS2, but then I'm going to stick to separate, separated links. All right. So again, empty configurations here. I'm going to say, all right, I need to enable feature NPIV because I always need that when I connect to a fabric interconnect. So I enabled feature NPIV because, but I do not need the feature F port channel trunk right now because I'm not configuring a port channel. I'm only configuring two separated links, two separate fiber channel links which are, by the way, F ports and they are trunking some vSANs. So I can create trunking v F ports without doing the port channel. So switch port mode is F, switch port trunk mode 
is on, but that's the default. And I'm going to allow some vSense. So in this case, 321 and 322. Allowing some vSense, F port mode is on. All that remains is creating the vSense themselves. So vSense 321 and 322. And now if I check show interface FC19, it says, all right, I'm in admin mode is F, trunking is enabled, and I'm waiting for the link to come online to show all the other vSense. So they will, that allowed VLAN list that will show up only when the port is up. And I'm gonna enable these here as well. So that is my upstream configuration. I configured my N5K and 7K, that's also configured. I configured my MDS on both Fabric A and Fabric B. All good to go. So now we did all our uplink configuration on the Ethernet side, not that very special, just ensuring that my port type edge is configured, my allowed lists are okay. And on the Fabric channel side, I ensured that my PCP protocol is configured, my vSANs are configured, and I configured NPIV. So the next part is going into the UCS manager. So I'm gonna go out here. And I'm gonna go to my UCS manager. All right, we're back again. So. I changed UCS system, so I'm running on a 2.1 system right now instead of a 2.0 system. Um, I can show you everything there is to know about the 2.0 and the 2.1 as well. We will start configuring our uplink, so do not pay attention to the already discovered UCS chassis, which you see behind me here. By the way, I, I, will, I make this a little bit bigger because it will be very unreadable um, if I make this any smaller. So unfortunately, I cannot zoom this in or anything. So I will try and, and zoom in on specific details if we need to uh, focus on, on certain details. So uh, let me know if you cannot read anything uh, and if you wanna know what it says, for example, but I will, I will show exactly what I click on. So, and sometimes I might go away. So uh, I hope you still hear me right now and then I will show you some things with my mouse, but I will prefer to stay here in front of you. All right. So we start up, we see two fabric interconnects and that's pretty much all we have. Now we're gonna focus on the fabric interconnect. So we have two of them. We have fabric interconnect A and fabric interconnect B, where in each of them we have a fixed module and we have an expansion module. If we click here, we see that we have a, a, a previous generation of fabric interconnect, which is a 6120 um, and that runs Ethernet ports, so the server ports, and then here I have an uplink port where the last four are my fiber channel ports. So they show up as green ports here, and uh, those will be my fiber channel uplink ports. So what I said is I have my ports 9, nine and 10 and 11 are gonna be used as Ethernet uplinks, and I have two fiber channel uplink ports that I'm gonna configure as a port channel. So if I wanna change the end host mode to switch mode, that's what I do here. So I click on the fabric interconnect in the UCS manager, and here I can change the switching mode. So either being in an end host mode or being in switch mode. And the same accounts for fiber channel. So below here it says the fiber channel end host mode or the fiber channel switching mode. And again, I do not need to have these equal. I can have fiber channel running in switch mode and ethernet running in end host mode or vice versa. So there are several managers in which I can do multiple things. I like to use a combination of the two. So in this case, I need to assign certain ports to be uplink ports. So how do I do that? I go into my overview of uplink ports and I will go out of the way so that you can see it better. So, uh, by the way, if you cannot hear me, please let me know. Because I had some issues with this view that some people did not hear me properly. But I think that's, that's not the case right now. Because I had some issues. No, it, it works. So, 
ports 9 and 10 are going to be my Ethernet uplinks towards the network. So I'm going to configure, I'm going to select those two. And actually, it's also going to be 9, 10, and 11. And I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be my uplink port. So I can select either a server port, an uplink port, or an appliance port. In this case, it's going to be an uplink port. After you click that, and it, it takes a few seconds for that configuration to happen. So if you do not get the successfully configured message right away, wait for it. It might take up to 10 seconds or something to configure these, depending on your link, depending on the latency that you have. But in this case, everything looks fine. Uh, I configured it as being a trunk, uh, as an uplink port, but now the status here says it is a network port. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's check on Fabric Interconnect B. Of course, we need to do the same thing on Fabric Interconnect A and on Fabric Interconnect B. So in this case, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna select ports 9 to 11, and I'm gonna say, all right, configure these as uplink ports. Are you sure? Yes, successfully configured that. Now, how does this look from a configuration point of view in the CLI? That's what I wanna, uh, that's why I wanted to use the uh, CLI version, so the real life version. Uh, I'm currently on Fabric Interconnect B because, but I I will be configuring things on the NXOS side, so I can select if I'm using either A or either B. So connecting to NXOS A. So now I'm logged into Fabric Interconnect A. If I do a show interface brief, I will see that I have four fiber channel uplinks. I will have a couple fax ports. Those will be the ports that go down to my blade chassis, of course. So these are gonna be my fabric extender ports. And my ports nine to 11 are now configured to be trunk ports, as you can see. If I do show run interface ethernet 1.9, you will see that this is a trunk configuration, so just a normal Ethernet trunk port. And it's gonna say, for the pinning configuration, you can consider this interface as being a border interface or uplink interface. This is all done automatically. I cannot do this manually. If I go into configuration mode, I cannot do that. No config here. But everything that I do in the GUI will show up as normal NXOS configuration here in this CLI. So very useful tool with troubleshooting. And as you can see, I are, there are already some VLANs configured on this system. So that's what I said earlier, that switchboard trunk allowed VLAN list is always gonna be on the port, but it will allow all the VLANs that I create automatically. So in this case, all the ports look the same. Ports 9, 10, 11, all look the same. And they do look the same on both of my fabric interconnects. My fiber channel ports, I did not configure them yet, but they are configured as uplink ports. How can I see that? They are running in NPV mode. They are running as NP ports. So that's my, my uplink NPV configuration, remember? So that is my fiber channel ports and my ethernet ports, all looking good. Now what I wanna do, I check my configuration here, so now we can start allocating VLANs and port channels. The UCS manager has a very logical GUI. What I mean with that is that everything is designed to be very sensitive to you, very easy to remember for you. So in this case, everything there is to do with physical equipment is configured in the equipment tab. So this tab is called equipment. That's where I configure all the physical stuff. The next part that I will configure is my ethernet networking part. So that's what I'm gonna configure under the LAN tab. All the storage or fiber channel related stuff is configured under the SAN tab. 
Now the fun part is, as I said, you will have some pre-configuration when you step into the lab. It might be that if you open up the GUI, it will show up like this. So that means that the last one who used the GUI closed the GUI and saved the state of it. Meaning that it, I, I, I freak out because I do not see all my settings here. We have a lot, we have some people that, that, that came to us and said, well, I, I, could, I could not configure my LAN uplinks because the, the options were not there. I waited long enough and I, I checked everything. I asked the proctor, the settings were not there. That is because of the filter above here. It's a very simple and stupid thing, but if they close the UCS manager, when it's set to some filtering, it will come back with that filter still on. So if you filter, if you go down in the tree view, so like if I select all, of course you will get all the settings back. And in that first level of tree view, I can dive into those. So if I just want to see pools, I select pools. All I see is pools. So that is the biggest difference here in the filtering. So it's just diving one level deeper into the tree view. Some people uh, have some issues with that. All right, so what happens here? If I check my Fabric A and Fabric B LAN clouds, I see that I now have three uplink interfaces. Same counts for Fabric B. As I said, my ports 9 and 10 will be configured as port channels. So what I would do, I go to port channels and I say, add a port channel. And I get into this nice port channel creation wizard. I like to keep port channel IDs the same. Please take a look at your lab task book if they specify what kind of number or what kind of name the port channel needs to be, because you will lose points if this doesn't match. Simple things, simple things to forget and simple things to do but you really need to have, make sure that your names are matching your task. So in this case, I configured port channel 123 on my Nexus 5K, so I'm gonna to stick to that. And this is gonna be Rick's port channel. And I click next. Believe me, the next button is behind me. Now, I will add ports nine and port 10 to this port channel. Let me go out of the way. So I add ports 9 and port 10 to the port channel and port 11 will stay an independent link. And I finish this configuration. So I created Rick's port channel, port channel 123, where I have ports 9 and ports 10 in. By the way, uplink interfaces are enabled by default, but as soon as you create a port channel and put them in there, the port channel is going to be disabled by default, especially at, well, on UCS 2.0. UCS 2.1, they changed that. But UCS 2.0 will have the port channels disabled by default. So I need to enable them manually. Next, I'm going to do the same thing on Fabric B. So port channel 123. I can use the same number here. Why? because I'm using, I'm configuring a different switch. So I created the same port channel here, enable it, I'm good to go. So I created port channel 123 on both of my fabric interconnects and port channel one slash 11 is still using that different thing. Now let's get back to our, to our CLI. Now, if I check the show interface brief, I should see port channel 123 being created here, which I, which I see. I can do a show port channel summary. And here you can see that LACP is enabled Why? Well, while I did not configure that. Show run interface for the port channel, showing me the same configuration as I would expect for this port channel. So do a show run interface for the physical port for the physical port in the port channel. I will see that it is inserted into port channel 123, and I enabled LACP on it. But here you can see I'm doing some magical things in the GUI and clicking and adding and finishing some wizards. 
But here is what I actually want to see, right? We all have our networking backgrounds, so we do want to see this. We do want to see that physical configuration being done in NXOS. So that's why I like the troubleshooting or the verification doing that on the CLI. And fortunately, you will see that in the lab. You will have that available in the lab as well. All right. So now let's start creating some VLANs. So I created my port channel. I created the separate, uh, separated Ethernet uplink interface. So now we can start creating some VLANs. Let's go into my VLAN configuration. Uh, actually, let's do that globally. So be very careful where you create the VLANs or where you start looking for your VLANs because there is a different concept because of course I can have separate Fabric A and Fabric B VLANs because I'm using two different switches or two different networking devices I can have them created in multiple fabrics. Usually you will configure global VLANs and those global VLANs will be inside Fabric A and in Fabric B or I can configure that separately. What I can even do is I can configure the same VLAN name for let's say Rick's VLAN and I'm going to give that a different VLAN tag in A and B. For some specific deployments that would be beneficial. But I'm seriously doubting where this would not cause confusion. But okay. So in this case I'm going to configure some global VLANs. I want to do failover between my VLANs. So in this case, I'm going to configure them globally. I'm going to go a pre, do a prefix, which is going to be production. And I'm going to say my production VLANs are VLAN 100 to 199. I'm going to check for overlap. And unfortunately, that range is already used by some other VLANs. So I'm going to use 1100 to 1199. Check if it already exists. No. In the VSAN, no. Very useful tool to check if I already have overlapping numbers in my database. And now, so I create a prefix and I add 99 VLANs here, or actually 100 VLANs here. I click OK. And now it will start generating all those 100 VLANs. And as you can see, it will show you exactly all the 100 VLANs that it created. So if we check the list now, we see that the production 1100 up to 11, all the way down to 99 is now being created, is now, has now been created. All right, going back to the VLANs, we created the 100 production VLANs and next we will start creating the DMZ VLANs because as I said, my DMZ VLANs are gonna be the uh, 200 to 299 VLANs. Let's check if we have overlap. No, we do not. We have vSense overlap. No, we do not. So we can start creating our DMZ VLANs. And this created those 100 VLANs on both of the switches in one go. So that's an easy VLAN configuration, right? That's, e that's easily done. So n not more manually typing and copying, pasting and anything. It's, it's, this is a good configuration. So let's check on the CLI. How does my uplink look? Port channel 123. I see that I now have VLAN 1100. Oh, sorry. I now see that I have VLANs 1100 up to 1299 allowed on my port, but also on the Ethernet 111 port. So all the VLANs allowed everywhere. 